I have a very simple neural network here that we're going to train uh, in real time. And uh, so just a reminder, like Jensen said, neural networks are used to classify data, which means we're trying to understand what the data means. We're trying to recognize what it contains. And the way they work is you present the data to the neural network, and uh, the, there's a bunch of neurons, and they're all interconnected in layers, and their activations sort of propagate through the network uh, until we get to a set of output neurons. And we check to see how strongly those output neurons are activated, and that gives us an indication of what the data means. So uh, for this example, we're going to train a very simple neural network that has two neurons. We're going to train one of them to respond really strongly to Ferraris, and another to respond strongly to uh, images of NVIDIA products. And the way the training process works is we're going to be feeding the images into the model and performing a numerical optimization to update the weights. And the weights sort of describe the interconnection between these neurons. So as we train the model with more and more data, the error is going to decrease. So our, our accuracy is going to improve. And we're going to see that visually uh, here. So um, uh, in the middle of the screen, you're going to see the weights of the model actually updating. Uh, and the error, we're going to plot that as, as we uh, train the network. And on the right, we're going to have a test set. So we picked some uh, representative images of NVIDIA products and Ferraris. And, uh, you can see underneath them is a little indicator. So if there's a red X, it means that our, our network is doing the wrong thing. And if there's a green check, it means we're doing the right thing. OK, so let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to start feeding in these images. And uh, you know, if, if it was random chance, uh, just flipping a coin, you'd expect to get it right about 50% of the time. So um, after training it with a really small test set on a few images, we're doing a little bit better than random chance. Um, but we're, we're still only getting about two thirds of the images right. So the way to overcome this problem is we're going to increase the computational complexity. We're going to increase the training set, give it more images. And uh, later, we will increase the complexity of the model. So let's uh, feed in a bunch more images. And here we go. The weights are updating. Uh, we can see the test images are being classified. OK, so we fed in these 72 images. And now we have a much better classifier that uh, knows the difference between our training set images of Ferraris and our training set images of NVIDIA products. OK, so that's really great. Um, let's play around with it a little. So Jensen, I've loaded up some other things that might confuse it. Uh, because we've given it you know, 72 images is still pretty small. And our network here is still not very large. It's not a very deep network. Um, so why don't you tell me which ones you want me to classify, and I'll, I'll tell you what our network thinks they are. Try the green Ferrari. Who it's makes that? That's right. That's you got right. it right. Because our, our network figured out that NVIDIA products are often green for some reason. There's a strong uh -huh. correlation between NVIDIA and green. OK, well, tell me what, what's that product on the lower, on the upper, upper right, upper right. The Italian flag is a Ferrari, evidently. <laughs> uh, well, it could have gone either way, right, on this one? Yeah, you know, I think it, I think it shows that it was a Ferrari because um, if you look at our training set images, the Ferraris are brighter. They tend to have bright backgrounds. You can sort of see that if you look, uh, whereas the NVIDIA ones tend to have dark backgrounds. So I think this image is bright enough that our neural network thinks it's a Ferrari. Yeah, you know? and some Ferraris are white. And no NVIDIA products are white. That's right. Uh -huh. uh, and this is a very simple network. We haven't trained it well enough for it to know that there's something to NVIDIA and Ferrari more than brightness and, and colors. Uh -huh. so. And what's that product on the lower right? Oh, it's an NVIDIA product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, that's, that's a, so that's basically how a very, very ultra simple neural net works. Can you show us something a little bit more complicated than that? So talk yeah. to us about some latest, latest breakthroughs. Great. So I'm going to switch over to this other computer here. Um, so we have a neural network that's uh, actually very uh, deep and has many, many neurons and was trained with a lot of uh, computation. Actually, it was trained on seven GPUs running for two weeks. So it took about uh, 25 exaflops to train this classifier. And it was uh, done by our friends at New York University and, and Rob Fergus and Jan LeCun's group. And uh, they trained it on the ImageNet benchmark, which is uh, a really interesting data set of a lot of natural images uh, with a lot of different classes. I think this one was trained with 1,000 classes, so it knows how to 
uh, differentiate between a thousand different kinds of things. And uh, one of the things that it's pretty good at is differentiating between breeds of dogs. So we asked all of you guys to tweet in some pictures of dogs, and I've grabbed a few of them to put up here. And Brian, uh, this isn't just about recognizing a dog. This is recognizing a breed of dog. That's right. Right? This is much, much more sophisticated than recognizing a dog. That's right. Um, although, you know, this, this network knows about a lot of things other than dogs, like different kinds of fish and, you know, other kinds of animals. So um, it is the first step. It has to figure out that it is a dog, right? Um, so uh, so it, it knows more than just dogs. So um, just to give you, a, give you a sense, if it takes 25 exaflops, suppose you have to do that continuously forever, um, that would be equivalent to uh, 25,000 or 5,000 times more powerful than the most powerful computer on Earth today. So that just gives you a sense. If you were to train this brain continuously, um, it would take a computer that powerful. Okay, keep going. Great. Uh, so let's see actually what the classifier thinks. So this classifier is running on a CUDA GPU. And uh, this one turns out it's a Dalmatian. So got that one right. Let's pull well, up another even one. Even a two-year-old can get that one right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't actually know what a Cairn Terrier is. Uh, so this, this classifier has exceeded my knowledge of dog breeds. But uh, this looks sort of like a Terrier kind of dog to me. So I, I'm hoping it's right. Wow. A Norwich Terrier. Yeah. That's a human hand. <laughs> That's right, uh, playing with a Vishla. Um, <laughs> my friend just got a Vishla. They are incredibly energetic dogs. So whoever owns this dog must have a lot of fun. <laughs> well, you can just tell it's energetic. <laughs> All right, next. A German Shepherd. Uh huh. And it does it quite conf confidently. OK, next. Yeah. Uh, so that's the end of the ones I, I pulled from Twitter. We got so many responses, but I only could pull a okay. few. OK. All right. Well, fantastic. Good job, Brian, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> fantastic work. Brian's work with Stanford is now being spread, seen all over the world. As a result of that work, as a result of that work, as a result of that work, darn it, darn it, it's OK. It's a malfunction. It's a finger malfunction. It's not a computer malfunction. It's, this one is easy to solve. It's a finger malfunction. Um, the, the, the amount of machine learning work being done all over the world is just growing so rapidly, it's almost hard to keep up. Many experts predict that this is going to be the most important advancement in computer development in the next five years. Because of the amount of data that we're being presented with, the type of new capabilities that we can bring to the world is really quite shocking. At GTC this year, you're going to see companies, researchers from all over the world present their work. Companies from Adobe to Baidu to Flickr to IBM. IBM is doing a CUDA accelerated machine learning on Hadoop. Facebook and NYU that you just saw is doing object recognition using deep neural networks. Yandex is here, the leading search company in Russia, using machine lear learning and ranking research results. Denso from Japan is here, using deep neural networks for auto automotive safety. And Baidu from China, the leading search company in China, is using GPU-trained deep neural networks for speech recognition. And this is really wonderful, real-time translation. Gene Rottenberry's vision of the universal translator is finally nearly upon us. You can literally talk into a phone, talk into a speaker. The voice is translated by a deep neural network. And what comes out on the other side is hopefully your spoken voice, but in a completely different language. This is just incredibly exciting. So I'm glad you guys are here. You're going to have a lot to learn about machine learning and uh, lots of ideas to share. Really exciting. Number one, the big data that we're getting, we're getting bombarded by 
and the amount of computational resource is ultimately what's going to turbocharge this field. So super excited about it.